It's the Roy Rogers Show. Happy trails to you. It's nice to meet again. Happy trails to you. Until the journey's end. Oh, Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat, brings you the Roy Rogers Show. Transcribed on the Double R Bar Ranch with Pat Brady and the Queen of the West, Dale Evans. Happy trails to you. Time to ride again. And here he is, in person, the king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Hey, folks, here's my good word for today. It's about a honey of a new cereal, Post Sugar Crisp. And it's my hunch you'll like it just as much as we do out here at the Double R Bar Ranch. You see, Post Sugar Crisp is just downright good eating. And it's good so many different ways. Try it real soon, won't you? Now, tonight, we'd like to tell you about how Dale and Pat and I solved an old, old mystery. We call this story The Last Stagecoach. <laughs> There is a legend that the last stagecoach to leave St. Joseph, Missouri for Paradise Valley carried on it an ancient land grant, which would have given title to the rich ranch district to an eastern stranger. But the coach arrived with no driver or passengers, and the old grant was never found. Now, on the eve of Paradise Valley's 75th anniversary celebration, Roy Rogers with Dale Evans, Pat Brady, and a promoter of Western pageants named Daniel David McClintock are at the Double R Bar with that same historic stagecoach. Ooh, Flash. Back up, Cracker. Ooh, Roy, ooh. this is the strangest hitch I ever saw. You know, it'd be much easier to put a new motor in Nellie Bell. Well, this was a standard hitch about 75 years ago, Pat. The tongue from the stagecoach makes the rear team easier to handle on the turns. The front team works in ordinary traces. I don't mean I'll have any trouble driving a hitch like this. I can certainly handle four pair of reins. Well, we'll find out about that tomorrow, Pat, when we have the stagecoach race. The race is a wonderful idea, Mr. McClinic. I hope so. I'm just happy that you and Roy made it possible for us to get this historic stagecoach from the Western Museum at Zenith. You know, I've tried for years to get them to loan it to me for these Pioneer Days pageants, but I've never had any luck before. Well, we know the museum folks pretty well, Mr. McClinic. Yes, and this particular stagecoach is so much a part of the legend of Paradise Valley that it's going to add a real touch of color to our 75th anniversary celebration. Just think, if passengers had gotten through on its last trip, Paradise Valley might have been owned by two eastern families. Oh, shucks. I don't take much stock in the story of the Spanish land grant. Anyway, Pat, it's lucky that the old land grant paper never was found. If it turned up... <laughs> We all might have to move. That's right, Roy. Original land grants, if they're genuine, sometimes still hold good in the courts. Oh, Dale, you spent too much time studying them carn sarn papers in the museum. Well, it was just about the most fascinating three days I ever spent. And the old newspapers and deeds and the letters they loaned me are going to make a mighty interesting exhibit. Ooh, back up, Flash. Easy there, Cracker. Here's another interesting thing. I've got these four horses hitched up and all set to go. That's wonderful, Rogers. And now we better find out whether I can handle these two teams or not. Uh, hop up there, everyone. Stagecoach leaving for Mineral City. Roy, I'm going to follow you in Nellie Bell. If, if I'm going to drive the other stagecoach against you in the race tomorrow, that'll be enough horse driving to last me for 75 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to ride the stage. How about you, Mr. McClinic? Well, you know, if Pat doesn't mind, I think I'll drive in the Jeep with him. Now, I make my living putting on these Western celebrations, but somehow I'm always happy to get off a horse and back in a car again. Well, if you want to call Nellie Bell a car, more power to both of you. <laughs> Dale now I'll see you in town. Come on, Dale. I'll give you a hand up. There you are. Golly, Roy, it's so high up here in the driver's seat, and it seems kind of rickety. Don't worry, Dale. This old stagecoach stood up over a thousand miles of mighty rough country. I think it'll take us as far as Mineral City. Yeah, you put an engine in that thing and you'd have Nellie Bell's great-grandmother. <laughs> if you get held up, don't worry, Roy. The boys are going to pull off the stagecoach robbery in the pageant tomorrow. Probably mighty anxious to get in a rehearsal. Well, we won't worry, no matter what happens. Well, Mr. McClintock and I'll be following you anyway. 
you got those water pistols of yours loaded, Mr. McClintock? Oh, they aren't exactly water pistols, Pat. I make it a point to dress like a Westerner, even down to the 45s. Well, these horses are anxious to get started. See you in Mineral City. Come on, boy. Ha! Hey, Roy. That looks easy. Bet you I beat you tomorrow. Well, we'll see about that, Pat. Hey, this is great, isn't it, Dale? It sure is. Hey, riding up here is mighty exciting, even if we are almost a century beyond the stagecoach days. Would you like to take the reins a while, Dale? Sure. Okay, here you are. Watch it now. It's quite a handful. Well, I've driven a four out before, but not from way up in the clouds like this, though. Say, what do you think of Mr. McClinic, Roy? Doesn't that name sound familiar to you? Well, the old fellow back in St. Joe who was supposed to own the Paradise Valley Land Grant was named McClinic, too. Oh, sure. And he's supposed to have died suddenly without telling anyone where the land grant was. If there was one, the fellow who was bringing it out probably kept it right in his pocket. You think the Indians got him? Don't know. Well, the festival's going to be fun anyway. Roy, look. Two masked men riding out from behind that rock. Hi, hi. Hold up there. Hold up. Hold up. I'm sure glad this is just McClinic's rehearsal. Uh, Stop that stage, Coach. You get your hands in the air. Pull up those horses. We're not fooling. Oh, go there. I don't recognize them. Do you, Roy? I'm not behind those masks, I don't. I don't place the horses either. All right. Climb down off that stage, Coach, you two. Keep your fingertips pointed at those budgets up there and climb down. Uh, sure, partner, but would one of you mind holding the heads of the lead team? Yeah, these horses aren't too familiar with stage coaching. Sure, sure, I'll hold them. Hey, steady. Now, steady, you. McClinic told us you'd probably be pulling a rehearsal. Having fun? Sure, we're having fun. Just keep those hands in the air. My, you're some actors, whoever you are. <sighs> Need my horse, Bill. I'll drive the stagecoach. Hey, is that part of the act? Driving a four-up isn't easy, you know. I'll manage. You all set, Bill? Sure, Joe. I got your horse. You better just drive a few rods down the road and then stop. That's a valuable stagecoach. Sure, sure, we know. Like you said, it's just a rehearsal. All right, get up there. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Well, careful now, Joe, or whatever your name is. Don't let those horses get out of control. Never mind about me. Come on, get up. Oh, oh. Roy, an amateur like that shouldn't whip those horses into a full gallop. What if he tip over? You give a Mineral City businessman a fat part like a stagecoach robber, and the ham in him really comes out. Hey, he really handles that stagecoach. Well, Roy, where are they going? They tore around that bend at a full gallop. Yeah, they're out of sight and hearing, too. The clinic shouldn't have let them have their rehearsal out in the country like this. Well, golly, I hope they come back. Well, here comes Pat and Nellie Bell and the clinic. Oh, oh, gracious me, Jiminy Suds. Roy, you and Dale get thrown off that stagecoach? What happened? Well, your actors pulled a rehearsal, McClinic. The stagecoach was held up. What? Sure. Two masked men riding a pinto and a blood bay rode out from behind those rocks and went through their act for tomorrow. The only trouble is they went off at a full gallop with a stagecoach. We just hope they know what they're doing. Well, I was just kidding about the rehearsal, Rogers. I haven't even selected the actors for it. What? Hey, uh, what are y'all talking about? You mean there was a real stagecoach hold up? We're less than ten minutes from the double R bar. We better rush back there and get horses. They may not stick to the roads. Yeah, that's a good idea. They can't take the stagecoach anywhere without leaving tracks, and Trigger and Buttermilk can follow them just as quickly and a lot more quietly than Nellie Bell could. Well, if we expect to follow them quietly, do you think it's wise for all four of us to go? No, I think Dale better hurry back to town and give the description of the men to the sheriff. Good, I'll go with her. No, Mr. McClinic. I'll take full responsibility for the stagecoach, but I think you'd better ride with Pat and me. <laughs> Know the three Sugar Crisp Bears, the ones on every package of Post Sugar Crisp? They're special pals of Roy's. And here they are to talk about America's fastest growing cereal. That's Post Sugar Crisp. You honey bears really love that delicious sugar and honey flavor, don't you? You bet. Sugar Crisp is a cereal treat that's fun to eat. Right. And you'll enjoy eating Sugar Crisp three different ways. Handy Dandy and Candy can tell you that. Sure. As a cereal, Sugar Crisp is dandy. 
For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy, right out of the box. Yes, you'll love Sugar Crisp. As cereal, just add milk or cream. No sugar needed because Sugar Crisp is just sweet enough. For snacks, Sugar Crisp is quick and easy to fix whenever you're hungry. Or eat it right out of the box like candy. It's the grandest treat you ever did eat. Like the honey bears say, As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Tomorrow, buy genuine Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on front. As Roy and Dale drive an historic old stagecoach along a lonely country road, they are waylaid by highwaymen whom our friends believe are rehearsing for the Paradise Valley anniversary pageant. But the producer of the spectacle disclaims all responsibility. And now Roy, Pat, and McClintock are on horseback following the trail of the stolen relic. No trouble following these stagecoach tracks. Them fellas sure didn't stick to the roads, though, did they? They sure didn't. The fellow who fooled us is a pretty good driver. I didn't know things like this happened in the West anymore. No, I didn't either. It looks like somebody believes the story that the Paradise Valley land grant is hidden somewhere in that coach. Oh, that's just a legend, isn't it? I don't know. I always figured it was, but now I don't know. Easy now. Pull up your horses quietly. Who? Uh, who? Uh, what do you see, Roy? Look off there in the gully behind that clump of cottonwoods. There's the stagecoach. Off your horses, easy. Uh, <laughs> I don't see anything. Well, I do. Sure enough, that's a stagecoach. Uh, yes, yes, I see it now. If we move quietly and stay behind cover, we can work our way over there without being seen. You stay here, Trigger. Let's go, men. Sure they can't see us, Rogers? They're too busy with that stagecoach to be looking very hard. Yeah, Roy and me have snuck up on criminals like this dozens of times. Look out, Rogers, they see us. McClinic, what's the idea of firing like they that? They saw us. The one with the rifle was drawing a bead on us. Well, he ain't drawing a bead now. Both of them's on their horses, and look at them go. You shouldn't have done that, McClinic. The first thing we learn in the West is not to get panicky. I was only trying to protect us. Roy and I can protect ourselves pretty well without having a tenderfoot louse things up. Never mind, Pat. The stagecoach is down there, and that's the main thing. If those two men stick to the mounts they're riding, they shouldn't be too hard to find. Now, let's get down there and see what they've wanted with that stagecoach. Well, whoever they were, they were starting to go over that stagecoach with a fine-tooth comb. Or with a razor blade and a crowbar. Well, look. The upholstery slit, and they even started to wrench off the floorboards. Probably trying to see if there was a false bottom where the old land deed could have been hidden. The coach can be fixed up all right again, can't it, Rogers? Yeah. They weren't at it long enough to do any real damage. That deed must have been pretty valuable for them to go to all this trouble. If there really is a deed and it was found, all of us in Paradise Valley might lose all the property we own. Well, could that really happen, Roy? It could, but I aim to see that it doesn't. McClinic? We'll use the other stagecoach for the robbery tomorrow, and we'll call off the race. But Roy, we can't do that. Everyone's looking forward to it. Yeah, Roy, I, I can't see what harm the race would do. You'd be driving one coach, and I'd be driving the other, and we'd be in plain sight of hundreds of people. Well, we'll think it over. But for now, I'm driving this stagecoach right back to my ranch. Are you sure it'll be safe there, Rogers? It certainly will. I'll lock it in the stable, and Bullet and I will personally guard it during the night. Bullet? Who's Bullet? Bullet's Roy's German Shepherd dog, and if Roy tells him to guard the stagecoach, I just pity the fellers that try to touch a finger to it. It's no use, McClinic. We're not going to try breaking in that stable with a big dog in it, not for a lot more than you're paying us. Do you know what you're doing, McClinic? You sure didn't find any paper this afternoon. The land grant's got to be somewhere on that stagecoach. It's taken me over ten years to find a way to get the coach out of the museum. I'm not letting this chance slip by. Maybe you can figure some way to hijack the stagecoach when they ship it back to the museum. That won't be necessary. I've talked Rogers into holding the race after all. And when it's over, that stagecoach is going to have to be completely rebuilt. How do you figure that, McClintock? The road they're using leads straight out of town to a place called Frederick's Rocks. The drivers are supposed to make a wide turn around the rock and head back to town for the finish. 
Now, if the horses didn't make the turn, they'd head straight across country. They would rip the sturdiest wagon ever built to pieces. Go ahead, Mac. We're listening. The sheriff and I are judging the race, and I'll inspect the harness before the start. It won't be any trouble at all to touch up the reins with acid. Sure, I guess you could do that all right, Mac. Now, you and Bill will be lying out of sight in the crevices of that big rock. When the horses go by, you're going to let them have it with a load of rock salt. Once that stagecoach jounces to pieces crossing that rocky meadow, the old land grant's sure to be found. And once it's found, we have a clear legal case. I will collect hundreds of thousands of dollars from these yokels in Paradise Valley. Either collect from them or throw them off the ranches. <laughs> Back with Roy in a minute. But first, the three Sugar Crisp Bears. We're the Sugar Crisp Bears and we want you to meet the grandest treat you ever did eat. Post Sugar Crisp. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Yes, Post Sugar Crisp is the new delicious cereal. You see, Sugar Crisp is made of nourishing, wholesome puffed wheat, coated with pure honey and sugar. So enjoy it as a cereal. Just add milk or cream. It's already sweetened. You don't need sugar. And Sugar Crisp is a grand between-meal snack, too. It's rich in food energy. Or eat it like candy right out of the box. This honey of a cereal is good anyway. So buy Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on it. Happy crowds line the main street of Mineral City waiting for the stagecoach race, which is a part of the 75th anniversary celebration. A top one coach are Roy Rogers and Dale Evans, the reins in Roy's hands leading down to four eager horses. Mounted on the fabled last stagecoach, also ready to leap out behind a spirited four-horse team, is Pat Brady. And at the sound of the starter's gun... the stagecoach from the museum. We can keep an eye on it better from this one here. Come on, boy. Yeah, man. Ah. The picture's running right alongside us. What are you planning, Roy? I'm trying to be ready for anything anyone else is planning. Pat's got his horses going like Sam 60. Uh, we won't try to pass him until after we make the turn at Frederick's Rock and head back to town. Frederick's Rock? That's the only place along the course where there won't be a lot of people. If anything's going to happen to Pat's stagecoach, it'll happen there. Hey, look behind us, Dale. Are the sheriff and McClinic following us? Yes, they're keeping up. Come on, there, boy. Ha! Ha! Pat's got better horses than we do, Roy. Do you think we can catch him after we make the turn? Well, winning the race isn't the most important thing, Dale. Watch carefully now. We're getting close to Frederick's Rock. Right. Ooh, look, there are two horses standing behind it, a blood bay and a pinto. Same ones the holdup men had yesterday. Watch it now. Pat's even with the rock. Oh, look at Pat's horses go. Boy, boy, they're not making the turn. Dale, Pat can't handle it. They're getting out of control. Oh, boy, look at Pat's reins. They're dangling loose, and his team's plunging right across that rocky meadow. Trigger, come up alongside, boy. Grab the lines, Dale, and drive these horses. Trigger and I've got to help Pat. I've got him, Roy. I'll manage somehow, but... Oh, no, boy, don't jump. Oh, I'm all right. Trigger knew what to do. Now go, boy. Come on, Trigger, get him. We've got to catch that stagecoach, Trigger. And Pat's got to hang on until we can catch up with him. Come on, boy. Hey, Pat. Pat, are you all right? Yeah, yeah the rain fell apart, Roy. And these horses have gone loco. I'll ride that and jump on the lead team, Pat. You jump for the rear team. We can stop them once we get their heads. Ah, I can't make it from here, Roy. Jump down on the tongue first. Then climb out on the tongue and grab the horse's heads. All right, Roy, I'll try. Here goes. Now, Trigger, just a little bit more now, boy. I go. Ho, ho. Pull up there, you. Ho. Hey, Pat, are you all right? Uh, yeah, I'm all right. Ho, With ho. that darned old rotten wooden tongue. Whoa, there. Whoa. Easy, boy. Easy, easy. When we passed Frederick's Rock, my horses took off like they had carburetors, and the reins fell apart in my hands. And when I jumped down on that tongue of the stagecoach, well, the darn thing split like a lightning-struck oak, and... and... Hey, look at this. Uh, what's wrong, Roy? Well, look. Here's why that stagecoach tongue cracked under your weight. The thing's hollow. Well, sputtering spark plugs, it sure is. 
Well, you'd think they'd make a wagon tongue out of a solid piece of wood, no matter what. Oh, and look here, Pat. Hey, there's a bunch of rolled up papers inside of it. Oh, 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 Roy, that was great. Pat, are you all right? Sure, I'm all right, but I ain't never gonna ride on nothing but Nellie Bell again. Roy, that was marvelous work. McClinic and I were riding right behind you. Great work, yeah. man. I was afraid the stagecoach would be spattered to pieces. It practically was. The tongue split like killing when I jumped on it. Yeah, and look what was hidden inside the stagecoach tongue, Sheriff. A roll of old, old papers. Roy, let me see those. That's what we've been looking for. Uh, I mean, could those be the old Paradise Valley land? Let me see. This one's written in Spanish, and it's signed by King Philip IV. This is the land grant, all right. Uh, what are these other papers? This one's dated in St. Joe, Missouri, in 1877. Why, it's a legal paper proving that the heirs of the men to whom this grant was originally issued were a couple of fellows named McClinic and Emery. Oh, wait, uh, are you sure? Yes, the sheriff's right, Roy. That's what these papers are. Then the legend of the last stagecoach is true after all. It certainly is, Rogers. And I can prove that I'm the only living heir of the D.D. McClinic who sent Emery out to file this land grant 75 years ago. What? What? That's right. And before long, I'll be the sole owner of Paradise Valley. Now, just a minute, McClinic. The way you went about getting possession of these papers won't help you any in court. What do you mean, Rogers? Sheriff, there were two horses at the base of Frederick's Rock, a blood bay and a pinto. If we go back and arrest their riders... I think we'll find that they were hired by McClinic to hold up this stagecoach yesterday and to cause the runaway today. I don't understand, Roy, but you always know what you're about. Let's go after them. Look out, everybody. Mr. McClinic, put those guns down. But I thought I saw someone oh, right... Oh, that's it, McClinic. You were firing warning shots to tell your stooges to run for it again. Yeah, you fired twice like that yesterday when we were sneaking up on the stagecoach. You got me wrong. I, oh, I never... no. Oh, no, you don't, what? McClinic. Because I got those guns. Sheriff, we'd better put McClinic under arrest first. Now, look, Rogers. Suppose I do spend a year or two in jail. When I come out, I can still bring suit against everyone who thinks he owns a piece of land in Paradise Valley. I can throw every one of you out of here. These papers prove it. Your case will be thrown out of court so fast it'll scare you, McClinic. Because this land grant is nothing but a forgery. A forgery? No. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You bet I do. Your ancestors were evidently no more honorable than you are, McClinic, and no smarter either. What do you mean? You remember when we were talking yesterday how Pat was teasing me about spending three days in the museum at Zenith? Listen, if this land grant were genuine, it would have to be signed by the King of Spain before the year 1654. Of course, and it is. The date is right on the document. That may all be, but the parchment paper this document is inscribed on was made in the United States of America in the year 1872. What? Well, look at it through the light. The watermark proves it. The date's in code, but that code is so well established it'll stand up in any court in the land. Hey, Dale, that's wonderful. Well, if that's the case, we'll just take this McClinic fella. Look out, Roy. He's breaking away. Get away from me, Rogers. I've got another gun here, and I'll use it. Oh, no, it. you don't, McClinic. Now, you... If I can stop the runaway stagecoach, I can certainly stop a phony like you. <laughs> don't, Rogers. Uh, I didn't know it was a fort. I'll tell you who the other men were. You don't have to tell us anymore, McClinic. Ooh, we know all we want to know. Oh, Roy, here come all the people in town. Oh, well, my gosh, we never did finish that stagecoach race. Hey, steady there, folks. Steady. Everything's all right. There was a little trouble here, but we can go right on with the celebration. You bet we can. And thanks to you, Dale, the folks in Paradise Valley have more to celebrate than they ever dreamed of. Day and night, volunteer members of the Ground Observer Corps are scanning the skies, helping to fill the gaps in our radar defense. Thousands more volunteers are urgently needed now. Sign up for the silver wings of the Ground Observer Corps and help defend America. That's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. <laughs> Happy trails to you Until we meet again
The Roy Rogers Show was brought to you tonight by Post Sugar Crisp, the cereal treat that's fun to eat. Fellows and girls, remember Roy's good advice and ask Mom to bring home Post Sugar Crisp in the red, white, and blue package with the three bears on the front. You'll love Post Sugar Crisp. The Roy Rogers Show can be heard again next week at the same time with Pat Brady, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production written and directed by Fran Van Hardisfeld with music by Milton Charles. Come and get it, come and get it. A quick two-minute energy for work and play. How about Grape Nuts Flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those grape nuts flakes? How about those grape nuts flakes? How about them, how about them, how about those grape nuts flakes? They are so good, good for you too. The two-minute energy works for you, so how about them, how about them? How about Grape Nuts Flakes? Grape Nuts Flakes is one of the triple wrap post cereals. Guaranteed fresh or triple your money back. Look for Grape Nuts Flakes, the great two-minute energy cereal in the package with Roy Rogers and Trigger on the front. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Post Sugar Crisp. Stay tuned for the latest news brought to you by Log Cabin Syrup. <laughs>